episode 20 of the 52 weeks of reefing, this one was all about metal halide lighting and the reef tank, a recipe for success. Uh, that was the title of that episode, but our core belief is slightly different than that. Core belief. I mean, anybody out there that's a Halide fan, get ready to uh, hit the thumbs down button. You're going to hate this statement, but it's true. Uh, uh, a core belief on Halides is Halides are awesome. Mm, awesome. It. Yep. Okay. But already dead for nearly every application or industry. And the thing that came to my mind is anybody who's seen uh, Serpent and the Rainbow. I have no idea what that is. All right, is. well, there's this guy in there, and he's like, <laughs> we turned him into a zombie, and he's screaming, don't bury me, I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's just like the halides do some things that are really cool, and in many ways they are actually the sun and the sky in one single product. And the caustic lines. And the caustic lines because mm. you have the ball, which is a single point of light. You have this giant reflector, which creates the sky effect. And you'll have the shimmer lines all in one. So why is it that they're dying? And your answer is the same thing. Uh, well, you, you said nearly every application in every industry. Yeah, so if you think of, no, there is no company in reefing that makes halide bulbs. They go ask a halide bulb manufacturer to make bulbs for us, right? Mm. Uh, and you've seen some, so many of them come and go. All the XM bulbs that used to be popular are gone. Uh, Phoenix? The Phoenix is, I uh, think they make once in a while, they make a run. The Ushios? Ushios, like uh, barely around. Yeah, uh, there's a few other ones. Uh, yeah, I but. Remember. Here's the thing is every application for halides or nearly everyone has gone away. Horticulture being one of the biggest industries that that was used for. Uh -huh. And now you can tell that is gone, gone way of LED. They're totally done. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the halides heat, are so the, inefficient. Mm, yeah. They create so much heat, so mm. many problems mm. for horticulture. They're done. Yeah. Halides are gone. Street lights uh, used to be used halides. To be halides. So they're done. Warehouse uh, lights, you were saying. Yep, warehouse lights in the sky, you can see them there. They used to be halides. Those things are largely done this too. There's no application for super inefficient, really hot lights anymore. Yeah. Uh, this is back to that T5 com uh, conversation though too, is I know just because one is branded like maybe Reef Bright or one is branded uh, Ushio, it doesn't mean that that is actual company that makes them. All right, so here's what matters most, though, is as bad as that news is, uh, let's talk about some cool things, actually. All right, so uh, what matters most about metal halide lighting is that more than half of the light is because of the reflector. If you were to take a, if you were to remove the reflector from the metal halide bulb, you would probably see very dim lighting in your reef tank because, because all of it's spilling out everywhere else. But when you add that big, giant two-foot by two-foot reflector, it's bouncing not only uh, here, here, and intersecting and all the way back, but it, all of it's forced downward. So if you think about this as that little teeny ball inside the halide uh, bulb is, if I just put that without a reflector, eight inches or 20, 12 inches uh, above the tank, mm. you know, roughly, you know, what is that? 90 degrees of it will actually enter the tank, right? Okay. The other uh, rest of the 360 is going to go outside the tanks, towards the ceiling, uh, every other direction than in the tank, yeah. right? Yeah. All right, now if I take that reflector uh, or that bulb and I recess it inside of a reflector, mm. all of a sudden, all of the light that that light's eliminating has been rebent down and shot into the tank from a million different angles, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay, so. It's the reflector that's actually illuminating the tank. And so it's a sky and sun effect again, whereas the reflector is probably three fourths of the light entering the tank and one fourth of it is actually coming out of that bulb going directly yeah. into the tank. Hmm. Uh, so when we think about why halides work so well and for the you know super nerds that were really into this back <laughs> in the day, uh, I think they're called luminarchs or something like that. Oh. Uh, but they were big, giant, like 18 inch or 24 inch by 24 inch reflectors. That was the one, man, that everybody, right. I mean, we had like group Not buys and stuff where we buy like 40 of them at a time oh. for the group and we'd shave 10 bucks off each by doing it. <laughs> uh, I remember the Hamiltons and like the Hamilton yep. Bim Bimini Suns or whatever they were. And yeah, and then like 
you know, so the nature of it though is we didn't know. And and like it was interesting because when we started doing our uh, testing, you would see the you could actually see the design of the reflector down in the bottom of the tank. Oh and, yeah. And you would think that the center of the tank would be the brightest spot in the tank. And actually at all the levels, it was actually the outside edges of the tank under the reflector. <sighs> And the bulb was actually reabsorbing some of the light that was getting reflected back in it. And so the dark spot was actually in the middle. <laughs> That's completely opposite. Uh, uh, opposite of what you would think. <laughs> uh, so when you think halides, yeah. think reflector, think the reason that it worked, again, is horizon to horizon lighting coming mm. 360 from all angles, not from a single source of light. Yeah. Okay, and so in that spirit, what matters most about halides is reflector size is more important than the bulb More choice. important than the bulb. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I can get, so you've seen, uh, I, I think of like Giesemann's and, and some of these single fixtures that have uh, maybe one or two halide double-ended bulbs in them, but you're looking at a reflector that's, you know, like uh, six inches by six inches or four inches by four inches. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you combine that with other ones, uh, I mean, basically we're looking at small pucks of LEDs in a similar fashion that when you put multiples together, you're going to get intersecting points of light and then you do fill up the entire tank. Uh, but as far as like one single uh, reflector that's a four inch by four inch reflector is not going to give you the same even lighting from all angles, 360 degrees as a two foot by two foot. Yeah, the reflectors that are this big are actually going to perform by, like today's LED pucks. Yeah. Whereas the reflectors this big are going to perform like uh, mm. the sun in the sky. Then how do you right? make LEDs perform better? You make them, make yeah. them big. Yeah. Right. Well, there's Maybe. a lot. There's something to that. Yeah. Uh, so with the reflector size, and, and, and you can think about it too. Actually, and this is actually true of T5s and fluorescents mm. as well, which is the reflector size. Uh, a, you remember, I don't know, most of you probably don't remember this, but... If you use those double-ended bulbs, which are like, you know, basically the size of my two thumbs yep. instead of this big, huge bulb, yep. uh, that actually output a lot more light. But there was two things about them that probably were doing that more than anything. It wasn't that the bulb source maybe was producing more light. It's that the tiny little reflector that they would put about those things would focus the light into the testing area mm. much better than a big one, right? So if the goal is to illuminate a testing grid in air on the ground, it's probably going to do Winter. that way better than if uh, you were trying to illuminate a large box of light from every angle. Yeah. Uh, also in there is because the things the size of my thumb instead of a big bulb, there's less of the light reflecting off of the reflector back into the bulb. Mm. Same thing with uh, T5s. So my first tank was uh, PC bulbs and everybody says that you know, T5s perform so much better than uh, PC bulbs, which is like a power compact, which is like a fluorescent that was bent around yeah. itself. You know, remember the spiral guys you used to use? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so the big difference here is not so much the technology that was in the bulb itself. It was the fact that when you had this double chain of two PC bulbs wrapped around it, the reflector design was really inefficient and would reflect back into the bulb, heat it up, reduce output, and waste all this light going back into the bulb itself. Meanwhile, with the T5 strip, uh, the parabola, like, or the, 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 shape, of the, the shape of the reflector yeah. could be designed so efficiently to get it around the bulb and back into the tank. Mm. So it's much about the reflector as anything else. Okay. Third one here. Third one thing that matters most when we're talking about metal halide lighting in your reef tank, a halide with a huge reflector has all of the T5 benefits, but with shimmer, uh, the sun in the sky in one source. So the sun and sky, one source, it's the halide. It's like, you know, the king of all lighting, right? I can yeah. get it. And I will tell you, if I had to go back and look at what I think is the best color of any tank that mm. I've ever looked at, it's the radium halide bulb. 20K? Yep. Yeah. Wi mixed with uh, the reef bright uh, strips with their oh, little, like, right. uh, you know, contraption they had. Yeah, that was uh, RT's tank. He had that uh, metal halide reef bright fixture with T5 combo or with LED yep. strip combo with actinic LEDs. Color. Awesome. Dang. Right? Okay. So, <laughs> shimmer, everything. It had the full package, real deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, well, why are they dead? 
why are they, uh, don't bury me, I'm not dead. You know, like, I, why is it people are calling for him to come back? Well, you know, all this stuff. You can yeah. see there was like, there was a lot of value. There's a lot of benefits. Hard lessons yes. uh, on this thing. I'm going to share the first one actually, yeah. is actually the third one in here. Okay. Heat is the deal killer in I this mean, one. No one wants to run a chiller on their tank. So such an inefficient type of light supply because inefficiency is measured in uh, energy output or energy lost, heat being a lot, a lot, a lot of energy. And that's what these things produce, just mass amounts of heat. And then you got it in a reflector that's kind of pushing all that or keeping all that above the tank, pushing a lot more heat down into the tank. And uh, now you have to subsidize with um, fans, or even if that doesn't keep up, then chillers. And uh, just the, the sheer amount of inefficiency, energy inefficiency from these things make it difficult. The, um, um, it's double fold energy efficiency. Yeah. It's all of the wasted energy created in heat. And then all the energy of having to essentially create, a, run an air conditioner in your house, which is a chiller, yeah. uh, in your house. And then it's also adding all that heat into your house uh, in which your air conditioner of your home now needs to compensate for mm. a, as well outside the house. Well, you're talking like a, a single metal halide being either a 250 or a 400 watt option when my LEDs, uh, you know, my big form, fact, form factor LEDs are in like the 180 watt range. Okay. So there's another uh, hard lesson in here too that like oh, let's say we got over the heat and I was like I was willing to run a chiller and buy a chiller. I'm in I'm in a Minnesota basement where it's always nice and cool. So heat's not my problem. Heat's not my problem. Whatever. Okay. The second biggest problem is size. Like the size of the ideal reflectors are not those tiny little teeny guys, which mm -hmm. you know you might see in a fixture that looks really slick on the outside, but from a performance standard, creates laser beams. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Uh, I think of the like the Giesemann, uh, uh Spectra yeah. and Infinity or yep, something yep, or yep, whatever yep, it is. Yep, yep. Uh, those little tiny reflectors look really nice inside there, man. But they are creating a laser beam hotspot, uh, and they're not blending. You can just look at it now, and yeah. now. That I know what to look for. I can just see it. Yeah. It's not going to do that. So the ideal size would be something that it's co big. coast to coast, horizon to horizon, and you're probably going to need multiples to get that done. So like the six foot tank, you know, two foot chunks, you'd have three different metal halides that completely cover the entire top of the tank. And they're tall. A lot of them are like, like uh, super deep. Yeah, 18 inches deep, 18 by 18, but, yeah. uh, 24 sometimes. Uh, there are the Luminarchs. I think the Cosmel from uh, oh, Hamilton. Cosmel. Yeah. Uh, they're big, man. Yeah. Uh, and they take up a lot of space. You have a big giant hood for it. And if you want to hide them, yeah. If you want to run those things. And so the space issue alone for, I think, most people, once you look at it from, uh, I know it's a dying technology. I know the light sources are going to dwindle. It's going to be inefficient. It's going to create a lot of heat. It's going to uh, require a chiller in a vast majority of cases, which is just another thing that could fail on me. Mm. Uh, it's, I'm going to have to have probably new outlets ran to there to be able to run all of that stuff. Well, it's just a lot to get over, man, for the average person. Uh, and, you know, the hard, another hard lesson was it is the punch that, you know, people said halides have oh, the punch. Yeah. It you wasn't the halide. Mm -mm. It's just those tiny little reflectors in some cases had the, the punch. So, so we're not poo-pooing on metal, metal halide because they brought us to where we are today and they're gorgeous. Uh, there is undeniable, uh, it's undeniable how gorgeous tanks these metal halides can make and the 20K Phoenix bulb and what that can do. Mm -hmm. Some of the best SPS sticks ever grown under those wavelengths and stuff. But to be brutally honest, you know, or to be honest, like this last hard lesson here, we have to be at this point in time, there ha this has to be on the verge of the last metal halide for reefing uh, hobby related uh, bulb runs. In fact, I remember uh, talking a couple of years ago to uh, uh, the Battle Coral guy, and he mm. told me he was, you know, it's, uh, going after, I think it was the Aosaki 6500K bulbs. He was starting to hoard them then, even years ago, because they were getting really hard to find, and he doesn't believe that they're going to be around. I mean, it's any indication that we just don't have metal halide stuff on our website anymore. Okay, so, and I was the biggest advocate for having for halides, because, it. I, like, I'm a dinosaur. 
Uh, I just really, really <laughs> like the stuff. And I, how can you be a reefing company that doesn't have halide True. stuff? Yeah. But then the story, dude, is you guys never bought it. Yeah. So when nobody was willing to buy it, it was just collecting dust on the shelf. Finally, after years and years of dust collection, I had to relent and get out of the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My dinosaur self has to create an opportunity for a new future. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, but really, for a long time, it's like, do we cannot be a lighting thought leader and not have allies here? But in the end, if nobody is willing to buy them ever, well, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, and, and now uh, it's getting even harder to source the if they if somewhere. So yeah, I, that's a piece that we're going to talk about with with LEDs and uh, uh, pretty soon here is is you know. There is creating the things that are perfect uh, for biology or even visually, mm -hmm. and then there's creating things that people actually want to buy. Uh, mm -hmm. And the companies that make these things make things that you guys buy. And so if you're not going to buy the halide stuff, nobody's going to make it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the reality is, is the halide bulb manufacturer, everything is drying up, so it doesn't even really matter if anybody bought it. Right. It's going to dry up yeah. regardless. So. Uh, love halides, Near probably dear. the single one thing that can actually emulate the sun and sky in a them. single form factor, but also already dead, just nobody's told them yet. Uh, so, what's next? <laughs>